This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Zechariah, one of the minor prophets, uh, called minor not because of the importance of the message, but because of the size of the book. And uh, that's Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. You got Zephaniah, and then you got Zechariah. And we're going to turn to chapter 14. We're going to read the whole chapter. This is a very, very interesting chapter. Well, it's an interesting book because it foretells the, uh, the day of the Lord coming. And it speaks of the millennium. And then we're going to do some work, take a look at some, um, some of the things in Revelation. But, uh, all right, let's go take a look. Zechariah. It's uh, two books before the book of Matthew in the New Testament. Verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord... That's what this whole series is called. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, this is, was fulfilled when the Babylonians came and took Jerusalem into captivity. You can read about that in the book of Lamentations. You can read about that in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet. But here's where the tone changes. Now, the, that was... Speaking of the present, well, close to the present time. But now we're going to go take a look at the future. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Did you know that the Lord cast stones, I'm not sure if it was stones or hailstones down from heaven to kill the Canaanites. Matter of fact, the Lord killed more Canaanites than the, uh, the armies of Israel did. Then shall the Lord go, and I'm sorry, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Listen carefully. And his feet, did you know the Lord had feet? Hmm. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. When the Lord comes down and his feet touches the Mount of Olives, it's going to split in half. Verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale, yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Huh. So when God comes back, he's going to bring all his saints with him. And... Uh, that's going to be a day of slaughter. Verse 6. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not, dot, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at even evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. I've read that in uh, Revelation. We're going to we're going to go back and I'm going to read the whole chapter and then we're going to go back and and show you the uh, other references where this comes to uh, mention it be mentioned in the Bible. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited, inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's winepress. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. This is very, very interesting. Verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have, that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Whoa. Their flesh is going to consume away while they stand upon their feet? And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. You know what this reminds me of? I'm not a big movie and TV fan, but if you've ever watched the movie The Terminator, uh, Judgment Day, I think it was, Sarah Connor was standing by the fence. The nuclear blast went off, and everybody's flesh just dissolved, just burned away while they were standing there. I mean, when I saw that movie, this is exactly this is exactly what it reminds me of. Sounds like a, a nuclear blast. And uh, didn't Peter say that the earth was going to be melt with fervent heat? With fire? Oh yeah. If you've been going through these studies, and we'll we'll go back to that, but verse thirteen. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah shall also and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Boy, I bet you the um, Zionists love reading that verse, thinking that it's going to apply to them. All the wealth of the heathen, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall the plague of the, of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and all the bees that shall be in these tents as this plague. Now this, I believe, this verse 16, 
I believe is going is referring to the thousand year reign of Christ, what they call the millennium. Um, that's just a Latin word that means thousand. Uh, the Bible talks about when a great angel comes down with a cha large chain and chain bounds Satan and throws him into the bottomless pit and locks it with a key and puts a seal on it so that it's not open for a thousand years. That's what I think this is referring to. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So evidently, we're going to be keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, what does the word tabernacle mean? Let's go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's a noun. It comes from the Latin. It basically means a tent, a shop, or a shed. Um... You can refer to Numbers 24, verse 5, or Matthew 17 and verse 4. It's a temporary habitation. Uh, it was, let's see, it was uh, applied to the temple, Psalms 15, 1. A place of worship, or a sacred place. It's also considered our natural body. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1, 2 Peter 1 and verse 13. And then God's gracious presence, Revelation 21 and verse 3. It also could be a, a verb. It means to, to dwell or reside, to be housed. So you could say Christ tabernacled in the flesh. In other words, he dwelt or resided or, you know, God, he was, Christ was God in the flesh. But it has reference to God among us, which is what Emmanuel means, God with us. So it has reference to, when you talk about the Feast of Tabernacles, that's what you're talking about. The Feast of Tabernacles was the final feast in the Hebrew calendar. So, let's read that again. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Doesn't sound like we're going to be keeping Christmas. Doesn't sound like we're going to do Easter. No more Easter egg hunts with bunny rabbits and chocolate eggs. But tabernacles. Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt. And the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now what was Egypt? Egypt was inhabited by the children of Ham. And uh, you heard of the, uh, the curse of Canaan. Well, Canaan was one of Ham's children. And Ham inhabited Egypt and Ethiopia and a few other places. 
so. Verse 20. In a day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And if you don't know who the Canaanites are, may I suggest you go to my playlist and check out the Angels That Sinned playlist. And by the time you get through with that, you will know exactly who the Canaanites are. They didn't disappear from history. They merely changed their names. They don't call themselves Canaanites anymore. Now they call themselves Christians, Jews, and Muslims. And they live among us, doing evil. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. All right, so let's break this down a little bit. Verse 3, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Well, this is future. So where is this in the future in the Bible? Oh, let's see. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. Just like the Mount of Olives is going to be split, right? Such as... Such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came up, uh, came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Okay, that's one spot. Let's take a look at another. All right, in Revelation 16, and verse 12, uh, let's see. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Uh, this is the unholy trinity. The beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The great day of God Almighty. Is that the day of the Lord? It sounds like it to me. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Well, I tell you what, people, you don't want to be uh, spiritually naked before the Lord. You want to have your wedding garments white, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Very, very important. And then we read verse 16 again. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Okay, so 
that's that is the that happens prior to the thousand year reign of Christ. So is there something else after? Let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. You know, there's, I, I, I believe this thousand years is going to be the time when all the children that died, you know, the abortions and died in childbirth or you know, died when they were real young. I believe that they're going to be uh, given new bodies and be allowed to grow up and to be taught, hopefully by us, people like us. And um, Satan's going to be bound. He's not going to be around to deceive them. So, all right, so... And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years, and then he's going to be loosed for a while. All right. All right, so that's in the future. Well, actually, <laughs> did you notice that? Uh, these are both future. He's going to be cast into the bottomless pit. That's future. And then after the thousand years, he's going to be loosed. So that's even when he's thrown into the bottomless pit, the verse refers to a thousand years after that. I hope I explain that properly. So not only is it future, but it's future from the future. It'll be a thousand years after the uh, bottomless pit. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls. I saw the souls. When people tell you, oh, you know, their soul sleep, they say, well, you know, he that dieth, uh, the soul that dieth, he knows nothing. And then they tell you, oh, yeah, when you die, it's like, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, you go to sleep, and then when you wake up, it's Christmas morning. And then Santa Claus came and visited and left presents. You know, that's what they want you to think is what happens to you when you die. But let's read this. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." But the, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection doesn't happen until after those people that died during the tribulation that don't take the mark of the beast. There's not a resurrection before it, not according to this, the way I read it. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog keep to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So there's going to be, God's going to pitch a battle and destruction when he comes to the earth. 
And then there's going to be a thousand years of peace. Satan's going to be bound. And then after the thousand years, Satan's going to be loosed for a little while. And then he's going to gather everybody together for another battle. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I wonder how their M1 Abrams tanks are going to uh, hold up to that. Or their T-72s or whatever. That's a Russian designation. An older one. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, people that tell me they don't believe in eternal torment for the wicked, that might be true, but I tell you what, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. What is forever and ever? Now, does that mean yeah, all, all the people that are thrown into hell are going to suffer forever and ever? I'm not sure. I, I honestly haven't done a, a study. I've had people show me where it's, the, you know, they're thrown in a lake of fire and annihilated. And then there's others that say it's, you know, eternal damnation forever and ever and ever. You know, I don't know. And honestly, I just think it's more important for me to try to feed the sheep and make sure they don't get to that part. How's that? And I saw a great white throne. And you don't want to be the great white throne judgment. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were, which were written in, in the books according to their works. According to their works. According to their works. You know, works don't save you. We're saved by grace and by faith. But your works will reflect what you believe. Let's face it, an apple tree produces apples. An apple tree that doesn't produce apples, what good is it? It's worthless. It's a useless tree. You might be a child of God, but if you don't have good works, if you're not fruitful, you got a problem. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You know, I always liked history and, and some of the older, like, war movies and stuff. And when I saw some of the war movies from, like, the 40s and the 50s, uh, you know, it's like they're, they were fighting in the Pacific against Japan and a bunch of sailors died. And they would give them a burial at sea. They would slide their bodies into the ocean. And they would read. They would read this stuff, some of this stuff, and they would, they would say, 
in Jesus' name and, and read right out of the Bible. I, What happened, America? What happened? Now America's a, a cesspool. Now they're even afraid to even say the name of Jesus Christ. All right, in Zechariah 14, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in that day that living waters, living waters, shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and at winter shall it be. So where do we read about water, living water? Uh, I do. I did an in-depth Bible study on this particular chapter, John, the book of John, chapter four, verse one. So we're just going to go skim over it. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees, and the Pharisees are Jews, or it's a denomination of the Jews. When it says Pharisee, think Jew. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that John, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more the disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now, Samaria was the capital of Israel when the divided kingdom happened. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah, but Samaria was the capital of northern Israel when the kingdom split, was divided. Perhaps you've heard of King Ahab. He ruled from Samaria. He was a terribly horrible, wicked king. Verse then cometh he, Jesus, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. You know, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and Joseph was the son that was sold into slavery in Egypt. Remember Joseph and his coat of many colors? And every time I hear that, coat of many colors. I think of the Scottish plaid. I always think about plaid. But what can I tell you? All right. Verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Jacob's well was there. A well of a water well. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou... Being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, Listen carefully. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee, Living water. Living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Art thou greater than our Father Jacob? The Bible study, if you want to get into this deeper, is the mystery of the Samaritans. 
She said, are you greater than our father Jacob? Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? See, she said that she was of a child, a descendant of Jacob, who was Israel. But yet she was a Samaritan that the Jews have no dealing with. Why? Jeremiah 3, 8. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. If you don't believe me, read Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. I go into much detail on the mystery of the Samaritans. You can look it up. So this woman said she's, um, her father was Jacob, who is Israel. And Jesus didn't correct her and says, no, 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 you're not a child of Israel. You're not a child of Jacob. You're a Samaritan woman. He didn't do that. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank there of himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Ooh. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that sayest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers... Our, as in hers and Jesus, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye, ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews." And that is true. The true children of J the Jews, the true Jews are going to be, that's who salvation is for. But not the synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2.9. There is a difference. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Oh yeah, I know the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Isn't that something? All right, let's go take a look. Turn to John chapter 7, verse 36. What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Jesus was speaking to the, uh, the Pharisees that didn't believe in him. All right, salvation is of the Jews, right? But in Revelation 2.9, we read the following. Well, let's read verse 8 first. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These sayings, these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, 
and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Jesus in John chapter 7, the Jews were talking to him, and Jesus said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Because he was saying he's going to ascend to the Father, and he was basically telling them, You're not going to be able to follow me. So, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. In Revelation chapter 7 and verse 17, for the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hmm. All right. In Revelation 21 and verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Then go, okay, go to the next chapter, Revelation chapter 22. And this is, Revelation 22, I mean, that's the last chapter in the Bible. Uh, the book of Revelation is the last book. Cha Revelation chapter 22 is the last, last chapter in the last book. This is like conclusion, people. Verse 1, Revelation 22, 1. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So... Twelve fruits, twelve tribes of Israel, twelve months in a year. Huh. All right, in uh, Ze Zechariah 12, and uh, for, uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Here we go, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord, that's what this series called, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. In Revelation 21, and verse 4, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Oh yeah, it's going to be burned up, people. Revelation 7, 17, we'll close out here. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All right, well, this is uh, the end of Zechariah chapter 14 and the Day of the Lord series. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that is Jesus who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.